Hello and welcome to another episode of the LCU Coaches Show, live on 99.1 SHAP Radio, KLCTLP Lubbock, Texas. Thank you for tuning in, whether it's live here on SHAP Radio or later on demand on the LCU Podcast. I'm Nathan Carcino, and I'm pleased to be joined by our three-time national champion head coach, entering his 22nd season leading Lady SHAP basketball, Mr. Steve Gomez. Coach, it's always great to have you. Welcome back to the show. Glad to be with you. It's been a while. It means the season's around the corner corner to get to talk to you again so very excited about this absolutely likewise and there was a busy off season a lot of things that uh, the program was involved in but hopefully around the midterm part of the semester now how have you gotten settled into this school year as we begin to ramp up towards the season yeah fortunately I feel like we're in a good spot we get to start scrimmaging just the next week I mean it's right on us right now and games start soon Uh, fortunately we had an opportunity to start a little earlier this year because of our trip to Brazil and so we we started practice July 30th. I mean, it was still uh, still summer. And so we had some time before the season started, the school year started. And so right now we're in a good spot. I think we've had a, a lot of growth from last spring, from the that last game last year till today. I think we've made some good improvements. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit last year in that postseason, as well as that trip to Brazil over the summer, and then get a preview of what this season is going to look like for Lady Shad basketball. So first, taking a look at the 2023-24 campaign, LCU ended off with a 21-10 and record, 16-6 and in Lone Star Conference play, placed them fifth overall, but first in the Lone Star Conference West Division, only dropping two games in division action. So from an overall scope, what were some of your key takeaways from from last regular season. Yeah, you know, really a, a fun, very enjoyable year, a great team, just a good group of kids that we just never really seemed to hit a stride of consistent play. And a lot of reasons for that, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things you might point to over the course of the year of a kid out here for a few weeks or there, but we just never played at a level that I thought was consistent enough to be as good as we needed to be. Again, it wasn't a disappointing year in terms of team, uh, performance, relationships, awesome, so many great things. But just when it came down to game to game to game, playing it the game the way we really want to play it, wasn't quite there. And so we had some games we lost that were close. We won some close games, but at the same time, we put ourselves in some binds over the course of the year. And I think our biggest opponent was ourselves. Ultimately, still fortunate enough to make the postseason, both in the Lone Star Conference Tournament as well as the NCAA South Central Regional. Looking at Frisco, LCU fell in the first round of the tournament to Texas A&M International in the longest game in tournament history, three overtimes to uh, fall to the Dust Devils. What was going through your head in this one as that game just kept dragging on and on? Yeah, it really, the game was sort of a synopsis of the year. It was <laughs> a game that we, we started out decent, then just had a big lull. We were in a struggle. We sort of turned it around and had a great finish to get that game uh, to overtime. You know, had chances to win it. You know, struggled along, struggled along. Get to the third overtime. It's like, man, we have a really good chance to win this game. And just didn't make some plays that needed to be made. And they made some some good plays, credit to them. So one of those that you see all the opportunities, you think, yeah, you know, they won the game. Uh, I don't know that they beat us. I think we lost that game. You know, there's things that we did that hurt ourselves. So, uh, yeah, it was a, it was an exhilarating and exhausting game. <laughs> and then in Denton, the Lady Shaps get the seventh seed of the NCAA South Central Regional, hosted by Texas Women's. Uh, the Lady Shaps fell to uh, to Colorado Mesa, the two seed, um, by seven, and going against the best player in the RMAC. Another example of just that fight continuing on throughout that game, working yourself into it in that second half. Uh, how do you assess how the team rose to that challenge? Yeah, you know, I feel like going in as a seventh seed, I think the previous year we were seventh seed and made it mm-hmm. to the final and had lost in a double overtime game. And so the seeding in the regionals don't really matter a whole lot. We knew it was going to be a good game. And, uh, it was a game that we had a shot to take the lead under a minute. It was a two-point game, had a really good shot, and it you know, didn't go and end up losing by seven. But really the story of that game was just rebounding. We knew we had to rebound well in that game, and it was one that we just got beat on the boards and, and didn't do the job we needed to do. Uh, so, again, a credit to them for exposing that weakness of ours, and hopefully we'll be better at that this year. Uh, but, again, you know, in the postseason, you've got to do everything well, and, and we just didn't do enough to win that game. 
Now, heading into the offseason, there were three seniors that were set to graduate, those being Shaley Stovall, Macy Maddox, and Audrey Robertson, uh, the last remaining members of that national championship team from just a few years ago. Uh, but through the COVID exemption from 2020 into 2021, you were able to bring back Macy and Audrey for a fifth year. What was that process like in the decision to go for one more season? Yeah, the last opportunity for, for kids to experience that and well, we're more than excited to have those two back. And Shaylee, uh, great for her, had tremendous career. You know, she's graduating, going on to professional school, get, got married. So it made sense for her to continue on in life and not try to play another year. With, I mean, Audrey and Macy wanted to play one more time and give themselves one more shot at postseason and see what they could do. Uh, so, yeah, it's 13 players out of 14 back with, with Shaylee graduating. The team's still going to be very different. You know, you lose one player, dynamics change. And so she's been tremendous for us, and we, we know she'll do well in life. And we look forward to these two having one more shot at it. Yeah, we talked so much last season about that veteran experience and that leadership that not only Macy and Audrey show, but Shaylee as well. And so, like you mentioned, nearly every player returning, all of that familiarity still there from last season. How could you see other players kind of fill that leadership role that Shaylee left and then those two upperclassmen continuing that influence? Yeah, I think that maturity is going to really have to show itself right away this year. Uh, again, we had experience back, but we didn't... L- really play up to our experience level. Uh, We were a little uh, inconsistent. So expecting those older players with five seniors this year and and kids that played a lot of important minutes over the years to really be steady. I I just think we need to have a steadier, hotter approach every game. And so, uh, you know, getting a lot of players back doesn't mean it's the same team. We're going to be a lot different. I think there's a lot of ways that we have decided we have to be better. And so I've got to do a better job. And those players have been a joy from last spring when we started workouts till now. They've they've really committed themselves to being better. And talking about that team camaraderie, especially in the offseason, we all saw the fabulous pictures on social media of the team's trip to Brazil. Of course, played a little bit of basketball there as well. But not only basketball, just in life. What was it like to have this experience? Yeah, you know, Coach Pacheco was great in helping to organize this to go back to his hometown. But, you know, amazing on and off the court uh, opportunities, you know, just to travel that distance over the course of, I think it was about a 30 hours from the time we left, five flights to get there. You know, that's going to bond you close together. And, and I, we, before we left, so that's going to expose a lot of our toughness, our joy. <laughs> and, and it never, it was not an issue. I'm telling you, it was such a fun trip there and back. And uh, every ounce of that trip from the time we left, all the excursions, all the games, practices, interactions with uh, great people over there, and they really set us up well to have a fun time. Uh, so one of those things, man, we'd do, turn around and do it again if we could right away, but we have to wait four years to do one of those. Yeah, looking at the team in basketball on the floor, they competed in the inaugural Tremania International Women's Basketball Tournament, uh, going 3-0, and winning the championship. And some of us might have looked at those final scores and said, maybe, maybe there's not a ton of competition. But in talking to the girls earlier this school year, it really was a different style of basketball and something interesting to compete against. Yeah, no one going before we left, I might watch video of those teams. And I, I mean, I wasn't concerned in a negative way but I was concerned if we don't play well and without much practice going in they were going to have some battles and sure enough you know the first game against the home team there the first quarter I think was a five-point game halftime was maybe 12 or 15 and we just sort of slowly adjusted because it's real physical the FIBA rules are different there's a lot more physicality to it you know the lane's wider there's there's just some the different the game's a little different internationally but our girls jumped right into it uh, second game played well. The third game I thought was the best team out of the teams that we were going to play. And we just came out from the very start and just really got off well. And that never was a game. But, again, it wasn't because of lack of quality. I thought we played at a level that I wasn't expecting that early in the year. But that also sets us up to make sure we're as we get to the regular season now, we've got to play at that level. Yeah, that was back in early August. And then throughout other parts of the summer, there was a little bit of downtime. Of course, Lady Shat basketball camps were going on. Uh, what were some of your messages for the team to stay active, stay on the court, weight room, all these things as they enjoyed their summer? Well, it's even it's interesting. This this week, the verse for our team, uh, every week we have a verse that they need to memorize and know in practice. But uh, the verse is, is Galatians 6, 9. It says, you know, do not deceive, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You know, man's going to reap what he sows. 
And so just the thought of that is whatever you're working, the, the seeds you're planting are going to grow to fruition at some point, and there's a time to reap a harvest. And so the message was, hey, we can't wait until the school year, the season gets here to get serious. It's always time to be working on getting better. And so through the spring, conditioning-wise, staying in shape, working on skills, getting better, uh, those were the messages that we clung to last year from spring through the summer. And I appreciate uh, them. We have some kids that came back in great shape. You know, they've, they've gotten better individually, stronger, faster. And uh, so it's got to come together as a team now. But really, that was the message is we need to be better, and it takes work to get there. We're joined by head women's basketball coach Steve Gomez here live on the LCU Coaches Show preseason special. Coach, looking at this upcoming season now, we mentioned losing only one last year, bringing in one true freshman here for this season in Maddie Moyers, uh, the only lady chap who comes from outside of Texas and coming from Colorado. So what can you tell us about how she'll fit into this unit? Yeah, sort of a foreigner, really for us. <laughs> it's just not very common. But she is a West Texas kid that lived in Colorado, and there was a neat connection with Casey Wilson and her father-in-law. There's you know, a long story to her getting here, but uh, she's incredibly mature. She may be one of our most mature players as a freshman just in terms of life and uh, her great family background, but just a tremendous kid personality, really shoots the ball as well as any player we've had in a long time. You know, We've had some really great shooters. And she'll add to that list of those players that we've had. Uh, and just picking up things as a freshman, the only freshman, everybody else has a little jump start on knowing what we do, how we do it. But her mind has picked things up well, and her personality has melded really well on campus. She's had so much fun from freshman orientation uh, through today. She's really in, uh, incorporating herself into life here, not just basketball. And just I really appreciate her personality. And if I'm not mistaken, doing some of my research beforehand, it looks like she had some state championship experience at a, a top classification there in Colorado. But uh, so many other recruits have had, you know, state championship wins or competition in their high school career. So when you go into this recruitment process, how much of that team success in high school is something you're taking note of as you recruit these players? Yeah, I, that's been vital from the very first day. You talked about 22 years ago uh, when I took the job, I thought I need to get involved in Canyon High School somehow because they were the just always have been great. Yeah. And sure enough, you know, Sierra Wilcox at the time, Sierra Lovern and Jordan Hampton uh, at, at Jordan Thurston now uh, came as freshmen after being winning state a few times at Canyon. And that just set a great tone for us. And over the years, we've had multiple state champion uh, players on our team because we do, we want to find great players, but they need to know what it takes to be a great team. And so her, yeah, Maddie's experience in that last year was fun to watch. Just add to the players that have experienced winning at those levels because you can be a great player on a bad team and really not know how to play and give up yourself for the team. Now looking at Maddie, but as well as some that are coming back from injury, she stands around six foot, Riley Verduin as well, and getting back Marty McCoy from a knee injury as well in last season. Of course, only losing Shaylee happened to be the shortest player on the team. You could argue that the team got much taller going into this season. So how do you anticipate as a coach some of those adjustments on the inside uh, offensively and defensively? Yeah, yeah, I think our team size is better and we're wanting to get healthy. We're you know, right now, some of our post players have been out with Reese, Marty, and Riley, expecting to get some of them back before too long. But it does allow defensively allows us to maybe switch more in man away from the ball or on the ball. You know, with with a size mismatch in multiple spots, that can be a, be a problem. So that helps us, and even offensively, just the the length and uh, the rebounding ability hopefully will be better, uh, and just. You know, versatility where some of our big guards can post up, play outside. It just opens up some new options for us. But, uh, yeah, we just got to make the right decisions. And, and then hopefully defensively rebounding, we will be better no matter what size, just because we're going to be concentrating on it more. Looking at the rest of the roster, of course, Grace Foster entering her senior season. Kennedy Chapels fresh off a big freshman campaign. And then, like I mentioned, some of those who are coming back from injury looking to contribute again here in 2024-25. Uh, how's everyone looked as we begin to ramp up those practices, those workouts you mentioned here in the school year? Season's only a few weeks away. Yeah, we really need, uh, we expect, and I look forward to, you know, Audrey Roberts and Grace uh, Macy really leading on and off the court, producing game in, game out. 
And then those, you know, Kennedy had a really good year and has gotten better. Uh, you know, Audrey Spurgeon's done so much work. You know, she's going to have impact on games this year. You know, and then we've got other returners, Taylor Thomas and Tia and Deja have they've just been really solid. I mean, they just make good plays consistently. You know, Kimber has done a, a, a good job getting better. Taylor Allen, you know, we've just got a, a good group of kids. And then obviously the Reese and Marty and those kids coming back. Uh, yeah, we expect everybody to be ready to step in. Obviously, we're not going to play 14 players in games. But we need to have eight, nine, ten ready to contribute, and everybody get off and do their job, and things will be fine. LCU begins the season up in Canyon at the D two CCA Tip Off Classic, an event hosted at the Rip Griffin Center this time last year. But the Lady Shaps will play Kutztown on November second, and then Black Hill State November third. How much have you begun this scouting process just a few weeks out? And then what do you expect from each of these initial matchups? Yeah, it's really good, you know, with getting to scrimmage South Plains and then uh, getting another scrimmage Friday and then going to Rice for an exhibition game. Yep. That will really prepare us for those first games. Cutstown, we played in San Antonio a number of years back. And we've watched a bit. Yeah, it's been a few months. I've already started watching. You know, Black Hills will be a new coach, so they'll have some obviously new things. Luckily, they play – uh, a day before we'll play them, so we'll get to see them this year. Uh, but the focus for us, we've got to just go play steady. Uh, again, we're not going to have any slouch games where we just show up and it'll be easy. And I think that's in a, a different this year. We just need a hotter approach every game to start and not go in with, yeah, we'll feel, feel our way around this game and see what happens. So no matter who we play, we'll have some good opponents. But that first weekend really is vital for us to get off on the right foot. And looking at the rest of the season, of course, some non-conference games here and there. You will have the uh, Vegas trip once again near the holiday season and then on into Lone Star Conference play. Does anything stand out here on your schedule and then uh, something maybe throughout the list that you're looking forward to as we get closer? Yeah, just the the focus on non-conference, the value and vitalness of non-conference games, especially regional games, because Cuts down, obviously, is a, a, be a great first game to play, but everything else after that is pretty much a regional game that matters in postseason uh, issues. And our conference will start in November. You know, we'll have conference games uh, in mid to November before Thanksgiving, and then a few more after Thanksgiving. Uh, so, you know, we just want to break our season into some segments and focus on each segment, take care of non conference games, take care of home games better. Uh, and then really when conference starts, you know, there's no margin for error. And so, and then, you know, the Vegas trip is going to be two good opponents, re- national opponents, you know, in a neat setting. Uh, but, again, we've got to practice well tomorrow morning, and then those games will be here soon enough. Uh, really excited, though, to see these kids. I think they're hungry to play. After that first weekend in Canyon, LC will travel all the way to Tyler uh, to take on two teams in the RMAC, like you mentioned, the South Central Regional Challenge going against Colorado State Pueblo and Colorado Christian, then followed by another mat- a matchup with an RMAC team here at home right before conference play. So right when you get that quick turnaround, just a few days after facing Colorado Springs going into St. Edwards, how do you anticipate that message and that flip of a switch going into the, the games that matter the most? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, earlier than normal starting a conference game. You, you, it's in the past, it's maybe been after Thanksgiving, early December. Uh, but again, with a mature team who understands, you know, we're not just going to slowly get ready for the season. Every game matters. You know, they've already talked about it. those regional games matter. And so we want to look at our first game, our second game against Black Hills as, as important as a conference game. You know, if you win, if you if you go into every game thinking we can win this game, or we could lose it if we don't play well, that gives you a little heightened sense of awareness. And so, you know, they've set some goals to be better and, and to be the best we can be. And so, hopefully, when that November twenty first conference game gets here, we've had some experience of, hey, we know how we can play, no matter if it's conference, non conference, postseason, whatever. And so, yeah, it, it'll be time. It's time to get going. You mentioned some great things already throughout about uh, the things you want your team to bring on the floor when it comes to mentality, leadership, and steadiness. But as we go on into this season, just a few weeks away, you're kind of ramping up the practices, like we mentioned, fine-tuning some things before we go up to Canyon. So what's something that's been a big point of emphasis recently and then something that you're wanting to anticipate that you see the most there in the first weekend? 
Yeah, I think just the physicality, not not necessarily fouling, but being more physical. That goes to rebounding. That goes to you know those loose balls, screening. And I think another important we've tried to emphasize is more offensive reading and movement together uh, instead of standing and waiting for something to happen. Uh, I think we'll be a little more dynamic and mobile. Uh, I think those kids are always fun to watch. They're always very play hard. They're always great teammates. I just think hopefully the flow offensively will be more difficult to defend. And then uh, defensively, the physicality, and then just the desire to pursue balls harder. I think last year we got out rebounded in some games that were really important. And so we want to avoid that being an issue. Well, we're looking forward to basketball getting underway very soon here in West Texas. And uh, we appreciate you joining the show. Coach, we talked about uh, so much. Looking forward to this season. And there's obviously a great culture that you've built here at Lubbock Christian for women's basketball. So as this team goes into the next season uh, in your tenure, how do you anticipate that culture being grown? We've talked about the veterans, but just this team identity as a whole. Yeah, and I think they've they've – intentionally wanted to connect even deeper and better with each other. I think the unity and leadership is tremendous on this team. And that just permeates itself down to those younger kids. Cause as we lose five seniors, you know, that has to be propagated. It can't just leave with the ones that graduate. And, you know, next year with new kids coming, I want them to feel and see what they're going into. Uh, but just those younger players on this team that they feel fully immersed in the culture and, and they're ready to t- step o- step in and take over in, in the years ahead. Uh, but we're just fortunate to be here. What a great school, a great environment. I mean, that culture is not just in our team. It's in the athletic department. You know, it's in the professors that care. And so those players are getting a, a great culture in everything they're doing. And so uh, just a wonderful place to be. And we want to honor that culture by playing really well and then f- to – we want the former players to still feel a part of the culture, and we want the ones coming up to want to be a part of that culture. Yeah, well, Canyon's not too far of a drive away, and the season's only a few weeks uh, from now. So what are some messages to the rest of that Shap Nation to get us excited for Lady Shap basketball? Yeah, I mean, come out and watch these kids, I think, and then get to know them you know, off the court. I think sometimes that's our biggest draw. They are fun to watch on the court. Uh, some days I'm they're not as fun for me as they are maybe for <laughs> y'all, but, uh, but then... They're so such quality people off the court, just mature, very well grounded, great perspectives, and so uh, yeah, come watch us play, but also visit with those kids, talk to them after the games, get to know them, and uh, hopefully it'll be a long ride this year that we can ride, and at the end of it, look back and say that's that's what we were looking for. Absolutely. Thank you again for joining us. Head coach Steve Gomez leading the LCU Lady Chaparral basketball program. We appreciate you joining the show and best of luck the rest of the way. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all you're doing for athletics and for LCU. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, keep it tuned right here to the LCU Coaches Show preseason special. And we'll hear from head coach of the men's team, Todd Duncan, right after this.